So today we're going to be talking about the common source amplifier, sort of where it comes from, uh, how we and how we deal with it in a circuit. So the common source amplifier. First of all, what is a common source amplifier, and why do we say common source? Um, well, the term common actually comes from two-port network theory. Uh, that's not really important for this video, but if you're wondering why, uh, it's because the source is the common terminal or the ground terminal. It's, the, it's, it's used as a common reference. So if we're to sketch out what the common source amplifier looks like, the simplest version, it's just this guy. So you apply an input voltage to the gate. You've got a certain voltage VGS, which here is just equal to the input voltage. Uh, and we know, and this is a resistor RD. Now we know from our semiconductor device theory, and this video does assume you have basic semiconductor device theory, but if not, we have the equations here. So if the MOSFET is in saturation, we know that the drain current, this is drain current ID, it's just equal to one half mu n C ox W over L uh, V overdrive squared. And I'm using the overdrive voltage notation because I think it makes life a lot easier. It's just equal to the th to the gate source voltage minus the threshold. Now, if it's in triode, we have the same term out front, mu n C ox W over L, uh, except now we've got a bit of a more complicated expression. Uh, we've got VDS times the overdrive voltage minus one half VDS squared. Now, in amplifier design, we almost never use uh, transistors operating in triode mode. So we almost never uh, use this mode of operation. And the reason for that is because If we were to graph the transfer function of this whole uh, circuit, it would look something like this. So initially, and this is going to be the uh, VGS on the x-axis and uh, V out on the y-axis, and V out is going to be taken from this location. Initially, uh, when the current or when the voltage is below the threshold voltage, we have V out is equal to VDD. And then the transistor starts to move beyond threshold and it's got a little bit of current that's operating in saturation mode and it's going down like a parabola. And then eventually it hits the point where it's at what's called the edge of saturation or you can say the edge of triode. Um, and then it starts to go off like this until you've, you hit VDD, at which point uh, you're, you're Closer, you're close to zero, but you're not at zero. And this is just the transfer function of an inverter. Um, but you'll see that in this region, when the transistor is operating in saturation, the slope of the curve is steep. So the slope of the curve is uh, here greater than one. And here in triode, the slope is less than one. And this is true in general, although not always, depending on your resistor value that you choose. And what this means is if we input a signal into the transistor, if the slope is greater than one, then at the output, we're going to see a larger signal. And that's what we want out of an amplifier. We want to amplify, technically we want to amplify energy, but here it's a voltage amplifier, so we want to amplify voltage. Whereas if we were to operate the transistor in triode region, we could input the same voltage and we'd actually get out an attenuated form of that same voltage. And I'm just assuming here that the gain is linear about a certain point. Um, for just ease of illustration, but this is why you generally want to operate the transistor in saturation. And we'll go over how to do that in another video, uh, but in the meantime, we're just doing simple analysis of the common source amplifier. So that's sort of the, um, the why behind everything. So now uh, let's, let's figure out the how. So how, how do we 
analyze this. Well, if we want to analyze a transistor, uh, ideally we want a circuit element for it. And the most uh, natural circuit element that comes to mind for a MOSFET is, well, we're applying a voltage and as an output, we're getting a current. So you might say, well, a MOSFET is nothing but a voltage controlled current source. And uh, you'd be right. In fact, that is what we use um, to model a MOSFET. But there's a difficulty here, and that's that the MOSFET's relationship is nonlinear. So how do we introduce a voltage-controlled current source, which is supposed to be a linear element, uh, into, into a circuit model? That's, that's kind of an issue. So, so what we do is uh, actually a pretty common technique in engineering, uh, and that's we linearize it. So we say it might not actually be linear, but within a certain range, we can assume it's roughly linear. And uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, there's one way with calculus and there's one way without calculus, and I'll, I'll show you both. Um, but the basic idea is to take the original equation, and I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. So instead of mu n c ox, et cetera, et cetera, we're just gonna say one half kn times the overdrive voltage squared. But for amplification and signal processing purposes, we're generally only interested in changes of quantities. So we're gonna say that we're, we've got some ID zero, so that's gonna be our DC value, plus delta ID is equal to one half Kn times our overdrive voltage zero plus delta overdrive squared. Now, if we expand this out, which I'll just do real quick, plus delta ID equals one half Kn times the overdrive voltage zero squared plus two times the overdrive voltage zero delta overdrive plus delta overdrive squared. Now, delta overdrive voltage um, for most purposes, it's going to be pretty small, and it's going to be much smaller than the overdrive voltage at uh, its DC value. So we can neglect this last term. And we see that this first term, uh, if we multiply it by these two previous terms, is nothing but the DC value of the current. So we can cancel those two terms, and we're left with delta ID equals, and this should be approximately equals, but we're engineers, equals one half Kn times two overdrive voltage zero times delta V overdrive. And if we cancel the one half and the two, it's just equal to Kn times the overdrive voltage at its DC value times the delta overdrive voltage. And that's, uh, that is our equation. So you'll notice that this is now a linear equation in terms of our delta V overdrive voltage. So as long as the change in overdrive voltage is much smaller than the, than the DC value, we can treat our MOSFET as a linear circuit element. And that's fantastic because that lets us use all the theorems we have at our disposal it lets us use circuit analysis it's just in general a very good thing and if you know calculus you might have said well there's a there's a much easier way to do that and that's just by taking the derivative of our initial equation so if we're only interested in a change in current with respect to the input with respect to the overdrive voltage, and this is the, the full overdrive voltage, it's nothing but the derivative of this equation, which is just Kn times the overdrive voltage. So that gives us 
our slope at the overdrive voltage. So that gives us the change in current divided by the change in overdrive voltage at a certain DC value of overdrive voltage. So we can rewrite this equation to give us delta ID equals KN times the overdrive voltage times the change in the overdrive voltage. And this, this overdrive voltage is the DC value. And this is just, we've taken the derivative at a point. So if we have a curve, we've said, I'm interested in this point. We've taken the derivative and then we've just said, well, if the function is locally very close to just a straight line and we have a certain delta V overdrive, or sorry, a certain, uh, that's our, that is our independent variable. If we've got a certain delta V overdrive, then we've got a certain delta ID and the slope is nothing but the derivative. So using calculus, you can much more easily derive uh, the, the relationship that we've, we got through all that hairy, hairy math above. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about how to analyze the common source amplifier using circuit analysis, both with and without emitter or source degeneration. And uh, we're going to do it in a rather interesting way that I, I think you may not have seen before.